let's talk about signed area. So what does signed area mean exactly? Well, basically for signed area, we mean area above the x-axis is positive and area below the x-axis is negative area. Okay, so I'm just going to highlight this to uh, emphasize above the x-axis means positive, below the x-axis means negative. So I can really draw you a picture so that you understand a little bit better what I mean. Let me create an axis over here. That's the y-axis. Here's the x-axis. And let's draw a curve in blue. So let's say it comes up like this, and then down like this, and then up like that. This area on above the x-axis, this is positive area over here. And this area that lives below the x-axis, that's considered negative. So uh, I guess when I ask, when can area be negative? I think we just answered that. I guess I'll just write it again. Uh, area is negative when it is below the x-axis, okay? Net signed area, net signed area, what does that mean? That basically means, you know, the net area is going to be equal to the positive area minus the negative area. All right. What about the total area? How is the total area calculated as compared to the net sign area? So let's take a look at how each of these things are calculated. Let me highlight this net signed area. And let me tell you how the net signed area is calculated. The net signed area is just the integral from A to B, f of x dx. So this definite integral that we've been talking about automatically calculates the net signed area. How do I calculate the total area? Well, the total area, you want to count the negative parts as positive. And the way that we count the negative parts as positive is we're going to integrate from A to B. We're going to take absolute value of the integrand. Okay. So what this absolute value is going to do is it's going to take all the negative area, all the parts that are below the x-axis, and it's going to make them positive. So working with this absolute value will be uh, how we calculate the total area. Why don't we take a look at a couple of examples together? Okay. Let's first calculate the net signed area of this curve, f of x equal to 2x. Um, so we're doing this over the interval from negative 3 to 3. And we want to use geometry to do this. So let me draw a picture for you. Okay, so let's draw a x, a y axis like this. Let's draw an x axis like this. Okay, and let's label here. So we're going to have 0, 1, 2, 3, and then we'll have negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, like that. And then um, let's go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, like this. And then negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, like that. So when we look at f of x, I hope we can all see that this is just an equation of a line, right? This is uh, this line is y is equal to 2x. So its y-intercept is 0, and the slope is 2. 
So notice how when I plug in a three for X, I'm gonna get six popping out. So I could label that point right there. And when I plug in a negative three, I'm gonna get a negative six out. So let me label that point right there. And then we just got a, a curve that looks like this, okay? And what do we notice? Well, I can see here that I have, um, I actually have two pieces of area. One piece of area I have is gonna be positive area. And the other piece, that, that goes from zero to three. And the other piece is gonna give me negative area. That's gonna be uh, from negative three to zero. So that's gonna be negative area there like that. So how do I calculate this area using geometry? Well, I know that the area of a triangle, triangle, that's gonna be equal to one half the base times the height, right? So when I look at the positive area, the, the base here is gonna be three and the height here is gonna be six. So when I go to calculate the positive area, that's gonna be one half times three times six. And then when I go look at the negative area, this negative area here, um, the height is gonna be three and the width is gonna be six. So we're gonna have, because we're calculating the net, we're gonna subtract away the area below the x-axis. So that's gonna be one half times three times six. And I hope you could see that, you know, when we calculate this, we're gonna get an answer of zero. So this will be zero units squared. Okay, so let me highlight this. This is our answer. Now let's take a look at example four. If you look at example four, it says, you're not looking for the net area, you're looking for the total area, right? So we want the total area over here. Before we were looking at the net, sign, net signed area. Okay. So I'm gonna basically use the same picture, but I'm going to um, write it a little bit differently. So this picture up above, this was the integral from negative three to three of two x dx, right? When I wanna find the, the total area, I really need to integrate from negative three to three. But this time I want absolute value of two x dx like this, okay? Now let's remind ourselves of how absolute value works. So absolute value of x is going to be equal to the following. It's going to be equal to x if x is greater than or equal to 0, and it's going to be negative x if x is less than 0. So if I wanted absolute value of 2x, this means absolute value of 2x is going to be what? It's going to be 2x if 2x is greater than or equal to 0 and it's gonna be equal to negative 2x if 2x is less than zero, right? Now, when I look at this inequality that I just wrote over here, I can simplify this. I can multiply both sides by one half and that's gonna eliminate the two here. So let me just take my eraser and I'm gonna eliminate that two and eliminate this two. Okay, all I did was multiply both sides of the inequality by one half. Okay, great. So how does that affect our integral? Well, when we work with absolute value, we really want to split it at the points where it's equal to zero. So we're gonna, we will split the integral at points where f of x is equal to zero. Now, in our case, our f of x is 2x. We found the split point just now. The split point is at zero. We can even see that from our picture up above. So our integral 
now becomes the integral from negative 3 to 0, absolute value of 2x dx, plus the integral from 0 to 3, absolute value of 2x dx. And once I've split it into these two pieces, then I can replace the absolute value signs with the appropriate pieces in the piecewise description. So this is going to become the integral from negative 3 to 0, negative 2x dx, plus the integral from 0 to 3, 2x dx. Okay? So uh, just to reiterate again, these x values from negative 3 to 0, that puts us in this second case over here because those x values are less than 0. These from 0, these x values from 0 to 3, that puts us in the first case. So those integrals are going to be equal to 2x. Now we are going to use the geometry part. So when I look at the geometry part, um, what is this area right here? This area is going to be this red area right here. So we're going to have 1 half times 3 times 6. That's going to give us 9. Okay. When I come over here, the area below the curve is equal to 9. And the area above the curve is also equal to 9. So when I add those things together, I get a total of 18 units squared of area. Okay, so I'm going to highlight that answer. Now, you might be wondering, why did I go through all this trouble of writing the absolute value and splitting it using the definition when to find these two numbers, all I did was calculate the area of a triangle. And the reason why I showed you this whole crazy thing is because when you have functions that result in things that are not triangles, you're going to have to break it down using absolute value. So I just wanted to show you that breakdown in a simple way. All right, everyone, we'll work on more problems together in class. Take care.